Hey there, it's Wendy from Worldwide Speak, and this is a writing skills workshop or video specifically geared towards English language learners. And in this video, I'd like to go over what a counter argument is and what a refutation is, and then give you a couple of examples so that you know exactly what this looks like in writing. The counter argument and refutation are what we use when we write an opinion essay, otherwise known as an argumentative essay or a persuasive essay. And you are definitely going to need to understand the concepts behind what a counter argument is and what a refutation is in order to have a successful essay in your academic writing. So why don't we get started with what they are and with some examples. You ready? Let's learn. Like I stated previously, you use the counter argument and refutation when you're making an argument in your writing. When you write an argumentative or opinion paper, you try to convince your reader that what you believe is what they should believe based upon the facts that you provide in your paper to support your point of view. The job of your argumentative essay is to change or persuade the reader to believe what you believe. And you do that by filling it with a bunch of facts to support your opinion. Okay, so first, we really need to understand what the counter argument is. So a counter argument is an opinion that opposes or is against your opinion or your point of view that you're arguing in your paper. The word to counter, like counter argument, means to speak in opposition. That means it's the opposite point of view. It's really important to use a counter argument in your opinion paper or argumentative paper because it shows the reader that you completely understand the other side of the argument, but you know, based upon facts, that your argument or your opinion is much stronger. Therefore, they should believe what you believe based upon the facts you provide and the evidence you provide in your paper. That is why the counter argument is vital to writing a very strong argumentative essay. All right, so let's go over what, an example of what a counter argument would look like in real life. Let's say our argument is wearing uniforms to school makes for a better learning environment. And the counter argument is some say that uniforms take away students' individuality. Well, let's take a closer look at these two sentences. So my argument is uniforms are great for schools because it is a makes for a better learning environment. Everybody looks the same. They don't have to worry about what they're going to wear. It's peaceful. Now, the counter argument says, wait a minute, I don't believe that. I think, or the, uh, some people think, that if you make students wear uniforms, it takes away um, their freedom of expression, their individuality. And that doesn't make for a better learning environment because the students feel frustrated or they feel like they can't uh, express themselves the way that they want to. So you can see my argument, uniforms are better. The opposite, no, uniforms are bad because, and in this counter argument, 
the, the counter argument is that the uniforms take away from students individuality or their freedom to express themselves through the way they dress. All right. So we just talked about the counter argument, which is the opposing opinion to yours, the opposite opinion. And now we're going to talk about the second thing in this video that I wanted to cover. And that's the refutation. The refutation is your response to the counter argument. And the refutation shows the reader that the counter argument is weak and that your argument is much, much stronger. So to refute something means to reject it. So your job in this writing is to reject or to refute the counter argument and that is the refutation. It should remind the readers again why your argument is so much stronger and why that counter argument is weak and that for sure they have to believe you because your facts and evidence and support is so strong that they cannot deny that your opinion is the correct opinion. Okay, so let's take a look at what this refutation looks like in real life, just like we did with the counter argument. Remember, our, the counter argument in our paper was some say that uniforms take away from students' individuality. Well, your refutation, the rejection of that, would be However, students are able to express their individuality in other ways besides the ways that they dress. So you can see here, this refutation rejects the idea that uniforms are bad because students can't express their individuality. And it directly says, well, hey, wait a minute, maybe students can express their individuality other ways besides the way they dress and it still creates a better learning environment. You don't have to be able to express yourself, your individuality by dressing differently than everybody else. You can do it another way. So the refutation rejects the counter argument and shows how that specific counter argument is, is weak because you have stronger evidence. All right, let's take a look at another example of a counter argument. And then after this, we'll look at the refutation. First, let's concentrate on what our argument is. Our argument is there is no need to use standardized tests for admissions to colleges or university. That's our argument. We want to convince you that colleges and universities shouldn't use standardized tests for entrance to their institutions. Now, the counter argument, the argument opposing my opinion, is many argue that if we do not use standardized tests, then there is no way to compare students. All right, the counter argument was, many argue that if we do not use standardized tests, then there is no way to truly compare students when it comes to admissions to colleges and universities. Well, the counter argument is talking about comparing and that the standardized tests make it fair because they compare students, you know, evenly, supposedly. Well, we're going to reject that and we're going to show you that um, you don't need standardized tests to compare students uh, completely or truly or fairly. And let's do this in our refutation. The refutation reads, nevertheless, 
Studies have shown that when colleges and universities do not use standardized tests, they are able to compare students more accurately because they must rely on essays and portfolios which bring out more of the students' true scholarship. So do you see what I did here? The counter argument, the opposite opinion from mine, says, hey, we need standardized tests because it's the only way to truly compare students. I reject that opposite view in my refutation and I say, forget that. That's weak. That's outdated. Studies have shown that universities and colleges are getting a better understanding and are able to really truly compare students because they're comparing them through essays and portfolios which shows more so what uh, the student is capable of academically. All right, let's review counterargument and refutation. Let's go back to that first example I gave you when our argument was that wearing school uniforms to school makes for better makes for a better learning environment. Do you remember the counter argument? It was some say that uniforms take away students individuality. They need to express themselves through the way that they dress in order to have a better learning environment. And then do you remember our refutation that is again showing that the counter argument is weak and our opinion is strong because we have more evidence or more facts or more support. Our refutation was, however, students are able to express their individuality in other ways besides the way that they dress. So you can see here we have our argument and then we have the counter argument which is the opposite opinion and then we have our refutation which rejects the counter argument and backs up our argument and makes it even stronger in the mind of the reader. So when they read our opinion essay or argumentative essay, they know that we are educated on the other side, um, the other opinion or the opposite point of view. But we know that ours is much stronger and we give that support to the reader to change the reader's mind, to convince the reader that they need to have our opinion because our opinion is the one that's based in stronger evidence and facts. So there you go. You've got your argument, you've got the counter argument, and the refutation. And I've given you these two examples so that you can have a better understanding of it and that when you go to write your opinion essay, you will understand completely how to write a counter argument and a refutation. Thank you so much for learning with us. Please click the like button if you enjoyed this video. And as always, we truly appreciate it when you subscribe to our channel. And for more resources, please visit our website at worldwidespeak.com. And remember, when you subscribe to our channel to turn on your notifications so that you get our videos every Monday and Wednesday when they come out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.